Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at the AWS organizations within the topic scope of our billing and pricing domain of the course. Now, AWS organizations is basically a management layer for your AWS accounts. Uh, and there are often times where you may want to have multiple AWS accounts, especially in large company settings. Uh, you may want a different account for your production workloads and then a different account for your development work. Uh, or you may want a separate account for shared resources. Um, so things like your tools and services or other middleware applications used by your organization that uh, end up getting shared across different teams, you may want those sitting in their own AWS account. Uh, or maybe you want a different account for your important backups or different security or governance considerations to help keep things separated there. Now, there's a number of benefits for multiple AWS accounts in large organizations. Uh, you can isolate your workloads better, uh, create different access control scopes to the resources within those different accounts, and make easier work of allocating AWS costs to a particular purpose or team within your organization. Uh, if one team is responsible for all the resources in a uh, given AWS account, it makes it easy to determine who's responsible for all those AWS costs. Isolating AWS resources created by uh, certain teams, uh, different cost centers or business functions into their own AWS accounts can help you do uh, showback or chargeback from an accounting level to uh, help the business easily understand where the AWS costs are coming from and add visibility and accountability to these account owners so they become more cost conscious about the AWS resource usage. Now the why and how around creating an AWS account structure is a much broader topic, but I wanted to give a bit of context here to help us understand why many organizations would have multiple AWS accounts in the first place. So if this multiple AWS account strategy makes sense to your organization and you've created multiple AWS accounts now, how does one manage all of that from a billing perspective? Well, if we're talking about three or four accounts, perhaps that's manageable for your business. But if a company has 10 or 100 or more AWS accounts, managing all those invoices and other accounting aspects would quickly become quite a nightmare. So managing all these AWS accounts from a billing perspective is one area AWS organizations can help with. With AWS organizations, you have one main payer account created as part of your uh, account hierarchy. And this often gets referred to as the root account or management account for your AWS organization structure. Now this one account is typically set up as an empty AWS account. Uh, and by empty, I just mean that you generally wouldn't run any AWS resources within it. Uh, as a best practice, you shouldn't really be running your EC2 instances or databases or other workloads in that root level management account. Its primary purpose is just for the consolidated billing of all the AWS accounts belonging to it as part of the organization tree structure. Now for a visual example, you'd have this one main payer account set up, and this would be your root level account for your AWS organization. Then other child level accounts get linked to this root account as part of the organization structure. Now from the billing focus of our lesson here, the benefits are that the AWS usage costs for all the child accounts get consolidated to that one root level account. So you get one invoice to pay regardless of how many child accounts are actually linked to that root account. Another billing related benefit of doing this AWS organization's linked account structure is with the reserved instances and savings plans. Remember that when you buy these long-term commitments for your uh, compute or other services to get your discounted pricing, these commitments and discounts are applied at the account level. So without AWS organizations, you'd need to manage your savings plans and RI commitments for each account. Now, if we think about an organization with uh, 100 or more accounts, this uh, quickly becomes quite a bit of a nightmare to manage and keep track of all that stuff. Now with AWS organizations, you can purchase your RI and savings plans at the root account level. And this is ideal since you have all your aggregated usage from your child accounts funneling into this root account. And then the RI or savings plan discounts are applied at the aggregated usage level uh, based on your commitment details. Now that concept of the aggregated usage uh, gives us a lot of additional flexibility uh, for our RI or savings plan commitments. Um, you know, no one has that crystal ball to determine what the future may hold for your AWS accounts and uh, your future usage. Now without AWS organizations and the consolidated billing of the linked account structure in the picture here, uh, let's say you had two or three accounts where the usage of the services where you had uh, an RI or savings plan commitment for uh, decreased significantly. Well, as we know, we made that commitment purchase with AWS, so we'd pay for that committed term regardless if we use those resources or not. 
But what if a few of our other AWS accounts had their usage increase and now are paying uh, on-demand rates for those services? Now, this is sort of the worst case scenario at an organization with multiple standalone AWS accounts. Uh, on the one hand, we have the AWS accounts now that we overcommitted on our uh, RI or savings plan purchases, and we're essentially wasting money now by paying for the commitment uh, on resources that we're not actually using due to the demand decreases that occurred in that account. Uh, but then in the other accounts, we had an increase in usage and are paying the highest on-demand rates. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could take the unused RI or saving plan coverage from those accounts where we had the usage decrease and apply it to those accounts that had the usage increase instead? Uh, that way we'd be able to maximize the benefit of our RI or savings plan commitments. Well, with AWS organizations, this is exactly what happens. Uh, you typically buy your RI or savings plans through the root account. Uh, and this discount is applied across the aggregated usage of your AWS organization. So if the compute usage in one account uh, dips a little bit and the usage in another one increases, your unused savings plan or RI coverage would apply to the other accounts. Now, I've typically seen organizations purchase the savings plans and RIs through the root management account at the uh, AWS organization structure, but there's often times where this may not be possible or you don't want to do this due to different cost centers or accounting aspects at the company. So one situation like this may be the uh, AWS account already had pre-existing savings plans or RIs purchased through it. And then at a later point, the company creates a consolidated billing linked account structure for their accounts. Uh, so what happens now? Well, in this case, the account that had the RI or savings plan purchased on it would be the one getting all the discounts applied to it first. Uh, and then if there's leftover coverage due to the RIs or savings plans being underutilized in the account, the savings would then pass up to the rest of the linked accounts and then get discounted where it's applicable. So even though the RI or savings plans uh, weren't purchased through the root level management account, uh, the pre-existing RI or savings plans done through the other linked accounts can still share the discount. Now, say in a large organization, uh, different teams or arms of the business manage their own cost center and related cloud infrastructure costs. If a team uses part of their budget on making an RI or savings plan commitment for the AWS accounts that they control, there may be some accounting reasons where they don't want the discount to be shared across other accounts. AWS provides the option to disable this discount sharing for your RI and savings plans to ensure only the account that made the RI or saving plan commitment is the only one that receives the usage rate discount. Now, if you do disable the discount sharing for your RIs and savings plans, be certain that you're aware of what you're actually doing here, because any unused RI or savings plan usage coverage from that account will now be wasted since the usage discount is not shared to any other accounts. And this could lead to some significant cost increases if you have large AWS costs and complex multi-account designs for your organization. So AWS organizations is a rather simple feature, uh, essentially letting you to create a tree-like structure for your AWS accounts and help ease the account management and accounting aspects of multi-account designs at large companies. However, there are a variety of benefits from having all the AWS usage costs aggregated together from the potential to receive discounts from AWS through RIs and savings plans and other volume-related discounts. Now, I won't dive into this too much here, but we should be aware now that many AWS services have tiered pricing levels. So depending on your volume of usage, you pay an increasingly discounted rate in a lot of use cases. So for large organizations, you may want to speak to your AWS account team about further volume discounts and uh, other programs you may be eligible for. But all these volume-based discounts are often hard to achieve through a single AWS account. Uh, if an organization has 100 AWS accounts, all that total usage would be divided up in varying amounts across each one. If we assume a somewhat even distribution of usage across these accounts in our example, uh, it's unlikely that any single account would reach the lower price tier based on its uh, usage volume. However, with AWS organizations and the linked account billing consolidation, the aggregate service usage of all the 100 accounts get used in the usage cost calculation. Uh, so it's much more likely that we'd reach different volume-based discount tiers or be eligible for other volume-based discounts when the usage is all aggregated together from all the accounts. Now let's build on our 100 AWS account example here. Um, if we use data transfer costs to the internet as our focus, what would our cost look like between the 100 separate accounts compared to having consolidated billing of the 100 linked AWS accounts? 
So to keep things simple, uh, let's say each account sends one terabyte of data to the internet each month, and all our 100 AWS accounts are not consolidated together at this stage. Now, if you look at the AWS EC2 data transfer costs for the uh, US East region, we see we'd pay nine cents per gigabyte of traffic out to the internet. All our usage in that one account is under the uh, 10 terabyte step uh, showing in the pricing table. So if we exclude the first 100 gigabytes of traffic out to the internet being free each month, uh, just to keep things simple here, uh, we pay that nine cents per gigabyte rate for all this account's traffic uh, that it sends out to the internet. Now, the same thing would be applicable to the 99 other AWS accounts, assuming they all have the same one terabyte of traffic uh, being sent to the internet each month. So each account, based on its own individual usage volume, would pay that nine cent uh, gigabyte rate. Now, let's switch our example scenario to where all these 100 accounts are linked, and we have that consolidated invoice as part of our AWS organization structure now. So as an aggregate data transfer out to the internet from all our accounts, we'd now be looking at 100 terabytes each month. And since this data transfer out to the internet has a tiered pricing model, we start getting some volume discounts here. So each gigabyte we use after that 10 terabyte level is at a lower cost. Uh, and then if we happen to use over 100 terabytes, the discount for usage over that threshold is an even lower cost. Now the key takeaway with all this is the fact that you can often benefit from lower AWS costs when you have the consolidated billing of all your linked AWS accounts combined through uh, the tiered pricing and other volume-based discounts. So that concludes our overview of AWS organizations from a billing and pricing scope, uh, now a topic of multi-account strategy and the other capabilities and features of AWS organizations. It'll be part of uh, upcoming courses here at Cloud Vikings, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, but for now, that's it for our lesson. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.